You'll recognize the DIY pulse transducer here. It's in the dipstick hole. We're measuring uh, crankcase pulses. And here's what the waveform of that DIY transducer looks like. A sine wave, plus or minus two volts. Rodke sent me their PDS transducer. It has that quality microphone cable that they seem to put on all their devices. 17 bucks and it's ready to go. So pretty much the same as the DIY transducer, right? That's a good waveform. Pretty much the same plus and minus two volt peak to peak sine waveform. So what do we do with it? Well, without a sink, not much. So that's why I placed one here on the coil of number one. Okay. Let's go analyze that a little bit. Let's bring in the cylinder timing overlay. And we'll anchor the bookends to our ignition sink. The trick to this is to always focus on the center of the columns in between top dead centers and whatever goes on there is what is critical and any other stuff in between is oscillations disregard it don't let it mislead you in this overlay red means combustion so on the power stroke here we have a peak for number one cylinder we have a peak for number three cylinder we have a peak for number four cylinder and we have a peak for number two cylinder. This is a good running engine. When things go wrong, this waveform gets very messy real quick. Part of the reason these waveforms get so distorted when there's an issue is due to the behavior of piezos. I think I can best illustrate that and best create a malfunction if we go to the exhaust pipe. The lessons we learned there can be applied here. So we got the rod key jerry rigged into the exhaust. Don't get uh, fooled by this dual exhausting. It's a four cylinder engine, one bank. Uh, this is just uh, for show here. Throughout the video, we've been using the HS402 that's designed by Martin Lauren and built on this channel and supported by the 8Scope app that you can find on the Google Play Store. I'm saying four very nice peaks here. Let's go analyze that. Let's bring in some labels. Anchor it to the ignition sink. I want you to notice something here. See how the H-scope label feature has the firing order parade plus one. Makes it so much easier to line up. So the labels are useful. If we look right in between all the top dead centers, we have our four peaks. But which peak corresponds to which cylinder? So spoiler alert, this peak here corresponds to number one cylinder because there's a rule of thumb that you go the second peak if you have a four cylinder engine. Another rule of thumb for a six cylinder, another rule of thumb for an eight cylinder. There's a better way. And that's our new friend, the cylinder timing overlay. Let's anchor the bookends. Again, we focus solely on what is right in the center of the columns. Brown 
is the color code for the exhaust stroke. And we can tell here that number two cylinder had an exhaust peak. We can tell here that number one had an exhaust peak and it confirms that little rule of thumb where it was a second peak after the ignition sink. Number three cylinder, brown here, has a peak. And number four cylinder also has its exhaust peak. Picture perfect waveform captured by the Rotkey PSD transducer on a good working engine. Let's go mess it up. So I've disconnected injector number three. Let's go fire that up. Like, you can hear that that's not happy. Whole different waveform. Let's go analyze that. Let's zoom in on this mess. Wow. Okay. Bring in the cylinder timing overlay. Let's anchor it. Again, we should focus on the center of the column. That's where the information is contained. Anything else should be treated as oscillations because that's what they are, oscillations. If we look at cylinder number two, there is an exhaust peak. If we look at cylinder number one, there is an exhaust peak. If we look at cylinder number three, there isn't one. And if we look at cylinder number four, we have a very pronounced peak. Let's talk about that. Vacuum gauges and pressure gauges actually measure things. Piezos measure squat. They react. They react to pressure changes. And they will overreact when the cylinder before it did not have its pressure peak. If we could actually measure the pressures in cylinder number four, we would find that it is even with cylinder number two and cylinder number one. But again, piezos do not measure. They respond. Using an overlay like this and using our critical thinking abilities, we can spot a problem. And the problem, of course, as we know, is on cylinder number three. Fix that one cylinder, and all of a sudden, the entire waveform strains out. Hope that helps, guys. We'll talk to you soon.